Hi, Pink Girly here from Time to Be Creative. It's another beautiful day here on the East Coast. And uh, this is part three of my Graphic 45 Seasons Envelope Album Tutorial. So I did some work and finished up the pages uh, of the book and worked on the center um, fold of the book. And I'll show you those. And then I'm going to show you how I put my spine together. And uh, I have an appointment a little later today, so I'll need to run out. So that's all I'm going to cover today. And then the next video, I'll show you how I'm going to make the binding of the book. And then we just have left to cover, to decorate the cover, and then um, do the tags and embellishments for the inside of the book. So this is going to be, again, this will be my inside cover, my first page, which I still haven't decided about. And then uh, in part two, we worked on these pages and um, we did a lift up here and a pocket here. And then of course we have our pockets here where our mats will fit in. And then this is summer and we did a fold out with a pocket underneath. And then I did change my mind again for the center. I decided to go with a rusty orangey background because there are a lot of colors that are already in the book. And then I made a side belly band coming down the side and a pocket. And this is a belly band on both sides here too. I thought you could put photographs or notes, whatever, um, a little extra storage for the book. So that's what I did there. I attached a little um, brad. This is a belly band and this is a belly band where you can just slip in smaller items. And again, we have the pocket where our photo mat will go. And then I finished up the autumn and um, I did the same technique that I did on that I showed you in video um, part two. I cut out my base pieces. I wanted a little inside page that was a little smaller. So I cut the piece. I did a fold line and I just uh, nestled that on the back of my base color. And then I just layered up my, my paper. And this is a pocket here this flips open. You could do something here for journaling or I might decorate that as we as we continue but um, you could put uh, something here to journal. You could paint some gesso there so you can journal on it or you could use a white pen. And then another pocket. I did go ahead and uh, line the inside edge of my pockets to catch us up there and then this is the uh, winter page and with this page I did a pull down flap same process cut out the size that I wanted made my fold line attach that to my base paper put one of the cutouts here to use as a tab I made this belly band. I'm going to put some kind of embellishment on here. Uh, and here again, inside paper, where you could put photographs. And this is just a little attachment. I used to look like little postage stamps that come with a paper palette. I don't think I'm focusing very well. Let's see if that's a little better. See if that auto focuses. My problem is I need my reader glasses to see, but then I'm not close enough to my computer screen to see if that's clearing up for you. And I just used a little brad at the top. I did glue this down so that it's a nice um, area to be able to put a photograph or something, slip something underneath. And then this would be our back page and then we'll have our inside back cover. So that's basically the book. Now we have to put it on a binding so that we're able to put it in a book. 
and I don't know what this is called. I call them fins, but it's like an accordion spine. So what I did was, this is the piece I'm going to use. I measured my pages, and you want this pocket to be able to slip on the fin or the mountain. I guess you could call it a mountain valley technique. You want that to slide on. Um, so you need to measure whatever size envelope you're using. You need to, to measure your inside opening. So I made mine 7 inches. Sometimes if they go in a little easier than others and it slips in very easily. And other times you have a little a little tighter fit. But I, I am going to trim my corner, so I'll show you that in a minute. But basically what I did, and I'm sure this will be easier for you. Like I've said, I, I, I'm terrible at doing numbers. But the thing you need to consider when you're thinking to make your spine is if you're going to load your book and your pages with a lot of embellishments, say buttons or bows or uh, silk flowers, anything that has any thickness to it, you want to allow room between your pages so that when your book closes, it it's not um, doesn't have a hard time closing. So I leave a quarter inch between my pages. If you're just going to decorate and use paper embellishments and you want it to be small, say you want 10 pages, you don't want the book to be huge, you may think about having an eighth of an inch in between. So I have six pages, so I need six fins to stick up to put my envelopes on. And that's what I'm going to have here. So what I did was I just measured my, my piece of paper and I did the math in order to have, now I make my fins a half inch. So, and I like to leave a half inch on the outside edge. So then I would just, I, I write it out on a piece of paper. But like I said, my husband could do this in his head and it would be very easy for him. And I think my strip of paper, the length of my paper, now this is just a sample, um, was probably about eight, eight and a half inches. And then I need it seven inches long to go into my envelope pocket. All right. And then all I do is I put, when I cut my piece of paper and I know what my measurements are going to be, I just put it on my scoreboard and I would start at a half inch. And then I want to build my first fin. So I would score then another half an inch, a second half an inch. And then that's where my first page is going to be. Then I'm going to measure a quarter inch, and then I need another half inch for my second page, and then a quarter inch, for my space in between my page. And you just continue that way, the length of what you need for your book for as, very, as many fins. So say I needed a book um, with four pages. So right now I have a half inch and a half inch here, an inch. So I have page one, page two. This will be my page three. I'm going to put a quarter inch in between. This would be my page four. So I do another half inch and another half inch. And then I like a half an inch, and you can do more on the outside edge. When you need to glue it down okay so this is where my paper would end if I was doing a small book so then here I have all my score marks and then you would just go and you fold them like valleys and peaks or mountains Now this is my edge, that is the um, end of the book, end of the edge, edge of the spine, and then I'm going to fold this mountain up, that's where my first page would go, and 
and then my next fold line is my quarter inch Let's see if I can get up closer here I could have scored this a little better I'm thinking and the quarter inch is going to be your valley I just use regular cardstock. If you used anything heavier than the 65 pound, like the 110, it would really, to me, it would really be hard to, to fold. So then after you fold that quarter inch space, that's where your next peak is going to be, your next mountain that you're going to put your page on. So that's where I have page one, and page two would go there. Now I'm back to another quarter inch measurement. And like I said, if you want your book to be narrower, like I've done books in the past, I mean, I don't want a, ten, a 10 inch spine, you know, um, that's just me. And by the time you build in pockets and pages that flip out, you can get a lot in, in a book. So you don't necessarily need a ton of um, pages. The next one is the mountain. And then we have another valley, our spacer. And then for our sample, this would be our last page, page four. And then we have that half inch extra on the end. So this is basically what it looks like. I have that guy sticking up the wrong way. That's basically what it looks like. Now on the back side, what you want to do is this is where I use my score tape or if you have the red uh, I think they call it red tape. It just gives you an extra stick and it's really nice for binding. You um, want to make sure that while it's flat, before you start folding your peaks, you're going to put your score tape on your quarter inch spaces. Now, I only have score tape in quarter inch. I have some red tape, I think, in a couple different. So all I used to, I might not anymore. I used to do a lot of books. I'm not doing so many books anymore. But this is what the red tape looks like. And it really, it's clear. It's just the backing is red. But this really gives you a good stick. So here's, here's the piece I'm working on to use for the actual book. So I went ahead, I did my accordion folds, and I started to score, I mean started to put my score tape on the back. So I'm going to do that for you now so you can watch me do that. So I'm going to take my score tape and the first thing I'm going to do while the rest of it is flat is I'm going to put my quarter inch tape, score tape right down that quarter inch fold. Now you can buy this in quarter, uh, all sizes. I mean you can buy sheets of this stuff. Um, but they have the half inch, they have the quarter inch, I believe they have the eighth of an inch. And the red tape, you can get that at Michael's AC Moore, and they have that in different widths as well. But this is where it's going to stick to your, your book. And because I don't have any half inch, I'm just going to double up here on my wings, if you w if you will that first uh, half inch kind of and you want you don't want to get on your fold line because you still want to be able to fold that so this is going to hang over a little bit for me I would not recommend using your dry tape in your runner gun of course you could but um, I would add glue to that because your book's going to get a lot of wear and tear opening, shutting, you're filling it up, you're writing in it, you're journaling in it. So you want your spine to stay in your your, your binding, you know, um, very securely. 
So I did all my quarter inches. And now what you want to do is you want to glue together your fins so they stand up and stay together so you can slip your pages on. So you only need your tape because it's double sided on one side of that fin. And this can get confusing. And let me see, I don't know if I can zoom in, see how much I can zoom in here. I don't know if that'll be better. Let's try that. I'm still trying to learn stuff about this camera. So I'm just going to take this tape and I'm just going to take it down the center on the one side of my half inch measurement. And when you put the double-sided tape on, no matter what brand you're using, I don't think A. Seymour and Michaels carries the, um, it says on it, it's it's known as um, score tape. It's called Suk Wang. I think I got this from the internet. I bought a whole bunch of them at one time to get a better price. You want to make sure you um, really push those down and take your bone folder or your ruler or something and really mash them down make sure you get a good stick all right and then you want to make sure you're peeling off the right um, tape because you want to fold that mountain together so for me it's this one here and I like to use uh, my little pokey tool or my um, utility um, knife and you just you're going to fold that up and then I always like to really mash that down again so that we have another so right now I have four uh, fins ready so I'm going to get the next one. Like I said, you only have to do the one side because it's double-sided tape. And all right, now we're ready for five pages and then my last one we have six pages in my book I'm just going to pinch that together and really rub that down and that's what it looks like on the back side and this, all our fins on the front side. All right. So this is going to fit this way in our book. Let me back this back out a little bit now. Okay. So we went up when we build our book cover. This is how it's going to sit in the spine of our book. Now, because when I put this together and I want to slip this into my book, I don't want to have any trouble. Now, I do have a little bit of overhang here. And if you can get the half inch tape, it's really... You know a little better and you can make all of the, your fins a quarter inch I like to have the half inch because it sticks up into the envelope a little deeper and um, it attaches better I'm doing a little bit of a hack job there that sticky tape all right now we need to have some adhesive on the fins because they have to stick in our in our book 
So I'm going to take my, uh, I'm going to use my red tape, I think, on this side. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Now, I don't need it on the outside edge because I have tape. Well, I did the one and I didn't do this end. I need tape on the back end of this to stick to the book. But now we're going to put tape on the mountain part, the fin part that I, I call the fin. And this red tape, I don't think you can tear. You have to cut this. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so that's one side. And now we're going to put it on the other side as well. Because when that goes up inside of your envelope page, it needs to stick on both sides. Let me do some with the score tape so you can see it on camera better. So I've got my next fin. Now, if you have the half inch tape, of course, you're going to get more stick and more coverage. So you're going to do the front side and the back side. Okay, front side, back side. Okay, I missed this first one. I'm just going to use this because it's easier for you to see. Now when we go to do the um, book cover, I'm hoping I have cardstock in a size that I can use. But if I don't, I can use cereal boxes to build a cover. And if I do use cereal boxes or some other kind of cardboard, depending on the weight, I might glue a couple of sheets together. But you don't have to really go out and buy um, chipboard. I don't know why I go say chipboard. Chipboard. You don't have to really go out and buy that if you don't have it. Um, it's nice to have. But you can make a cover. Sometimes the score tape is hard to really tear. Um, using an empty cereal box. Or if you have, and it, of course it depends on the size you need too. Um, if you have, I've already used, like, say, a sketchbook. If you have a sketchbook, the back page of a sketchbook. Oh, my gosh, that's such nice cardboard. I'm telling you, I don't throw anything out. I have people collecting all kinds of trash for, for me from all my different projects. My poor husband will say, we're saving this now, too. Ah, what can I tell you? Okay, so this is my last one. Some kind of little fuzzy hair there. So now we've got it on all of our fins and I'm just going to go to each one and really rub that down. Hopefully this will make sense in a minute. <laughs> now I've made several books. I haven't well, I guess I did a wedding. I have a wedding album. The red tape you can see when you have a good rub down because um, you can see that it's mashed down really good. And uh, I, on the wedding album video, I show you how to put a binder, a book together. But I did that quite a while ago. All right, so here we have all our fins ready for our pages. Uh, oh, nope, I missed one. I was just going to say, I don't think there's six. 
Now when you go to slip your pages on, the score tape's like that dry tape in the, um, that tape, that roller tape dispenser, the tape runner. And you don't have any, you really don't have any wiggle room. You got to get it on there and you got to stick it. And you want to make sure you get your page down where it should be and that it's not crooked. It can be a little nerve wracking, but it's not rocket science. And worst case scenario, you make a new you make a new spine. All right, so I have all my fins covered in tape, ready to take my pages. The back is all taped and ready to go. See, now if we did this part first, you could do it, but it wouldn't be as easy to put the tape on your uh, quarter inch valleys. I have some additional glue there I'll pull off. Okay, so this is how it's going to be. Now you want to make sure you have your pages in order and the way that you want them to go. So this is my, let me back out a little bit more here so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I have my fins up in the air. This is my first page, my spring page. And it's going to slip on. I'm going to do it this way. It's going to slip on this way. Okay. That's how our first page is going to be on. Now, like I said, I'm going to go through and I'm going to clip the corners. So when I actually go to attach my pages, they're going to slip on a lot easier if I have these little angles cut. And then I use my little cutter knife, my X-Acto knife, or like my little pokey tool here. It's not a pokey tool. It's called an awl, I think. And if you have good fingernails, you won't need anything like that. But with these acrylic nails, I can't pick up the edge of the tape. And I like to start the tape, get my page set, and then grab the end. Pull the tape and then squeeze the page. Another tool that I keep handy for all my crafting, and I use it almost with every project, is a pair of tweezers. So I have this pair that's for beading, and then I have an old cheap pair, you know, that you would use as, you know, to pluck your eyebrows. But then you can pull, get the end of that tape and pull it. So here we go, and I do one side at a time. I don't do both sides at a time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up just a little edge of that tape, and I'm going to slip on my page. got it down on the table as flat as it'll go. I do have a little bit of wiggle room. Now you don't want to do this. You don't want to hold it up in the air and do this, okay? You want to stay on your table on your flat surface because you want to get your page down, not over that crease, but right at the bottom of your page, okay?
you know, this may not go well because I'm trying to do it so <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Well, you could actually, I guess, um, it'll be easier for you because you're not trying to do it on camera. I'm going to fold that down a little bit so I can grab a hold of that. Just make sure you have your page going in the right way. Now I do have a little bit of space room, so I pull my tape out, push my page down. And I've got it attached on that one side. The second side's a lot easier. So I'm just gonna peek underneath there. I'm gonna pull my tape out the edge of my paper, pull it off, and rub it down. And we have page one on. And then I have the quarter inch in between, and this is where our second page is going to go. So I want the second half of my spring page. Which is this page. And I'm going to slip it on. And because I have a little bit of wiggle room, I want to try to make sure that they're lined up well. It might be easier if I do the back half first. So I'm going to sneak in there and oh, this is the red tape so it's a little harder to see. Grab a hold of that. Sorry, I keep spinning this around, but it's a little easier. Um, pull out your paper. two. Now I need the other half of summer. You want to make sure you're going in the right direction. Now you could really put your envelopes on and do all your decorating uh, after you get your pages on your spine. I just find it a little easier to um, work on the pages and um, get them laid out and that kind of stuff and then put them on and then finish up and embellish. But you'll find your own way, whatever works better for you and your brain and how, how you like to work. You just don't want to get all over your fold line. Now I'm not too sure if this is a good idea, but I popped up these um, little, I cut out little ovals in black and then the, a piece of the paper palette and I put it on one of those little pop-up dots. But when the book gets open and closed, um, they may not stay there, I'm not sure. They might um, hook into each other and give me some trouble. 
but for right now I've got to where we've got them. So again, now we're at the center of the book. Just trying to stand that up and make sure my pages are in a good spot. down a little bit you know come on the back side Okay, second half of autumn. Now you can make your own pages, your own pocket pages too, if you have a specific color, if you have a lot of cardstock. You know, I'm sure you can find videos on that too, but you just make the size that you want and glue your paper together. Um, you don't have to use an envelope. And I've also made books where I don't use envelopes and I just use cardstock. And um, you just attach the pages a little different. But like I said, um, Ginger from my sister Scrapper and uh, Claire from uh, my creative spirit. I think that's what it is. My creative. Oh. <sighs> I said it on the other video. My creative spirit, I think it is. You know, they have they have tons of videos that show you all different different ways to attach pages and different pages. It might be easier too if you can keep your pages straight to. Um, do the first set of pages and then when you get to the center start from the back of the book and come forward ah all right so this slipped out that's that's what i'm saying it's um because i have the weight of the rest of the book i had a hard time grabbing the tape. I'm going to make sure I don't get myself twisted up and put the page on backwards. I might cry. Okay, I think I got it. And then just be careful when you're rubbing this down to attach it that you don't cut through I mean it is sturdy paper but it, it is just card stock it is just paper this is where the tweezers really come in handy Page winter. I had it upside down. Now I was going to show you this too. Here I didn't ink as well as I should. You can see a little bit of white. You can always take a, a black marker 
or you know try to ink it again I'll probably use a little marker you could use a little acrylic paint or it may not bother you you could just leave it be but I probably will ink that a little bit more um, maybe I should do that now before I attach the page go last page I'm going to try to grab it from this end your other side. Now when we build the binding and the cover for the book, then we'll pull all this tape and that will go on the spine of the book. But this is it. This is basically it. Our pages are in. And you have a nice space in between the pages. So if you want to build up anything or add anything additional, um, you can really see the white on the bottom of this page. I don't have my mats together. I have them cut, but I didn't glue them down. Because when that fin goes in a half inch, I wasn't sure if I had the mat would be the right size. And let's just take a minute, see if I've got them. So I thought before I glue them all together, I want to make sure it's not going to stick out too far. Just sticks out a little bit. So I might want to think about that. And then I'm going to um, also cut a little like on this first page that we did, the spring page, make our little cutout so our tab will be there. See, now this one's going to be a little fiddly because I put that paper on the wrong end in video one. You remember how I said I didn't like seeing that white and I put that decorative paper. So this is catching the edge. So I may have to do something about this one in particular, like maybe glue in another piece of paper so it slides in uh, very easily. But you won't have that problem because you'll do yours right. So I think I might take about an eighth of an inch off of the of these uh, mats. But that's basically how that will that will work. These will all be fine, and they slide right in. Um, but I'm not sure if I want, that might be okay to stick out because well, I can I can accommodate for that when I make the cover. But this is it. So that's all I'm going to do for today. And then I'll get my pieces cut for the book cover. And the next video will do the book cover. And then the last video um, will decorate the cover and embellish our pages and then this will be done so thanks for tuning in if you found this helpful or interesting picked up a good few tips please give me a uh, thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time
Bye-bye.